This is Mike with RPS Solar Pumps, and today we have an exciting video for you. That's a complete installation of one of our solar pump kits. You can see all the components here behind me. They easily fit in the back of a truck, so you can drive up to your installation site and get on installing. Here we have our pump, we have our solar panels, and we have our turnkey kit. Now we have a complete video about the turnkey kit, but it comes with our solar panel mount, our pipe, our wire, and basically everything else you're gonna need for the installation. All you need to supply is the mounting pipe for the panels, concrete to mount that pipe, and a grounding rod. You also get our complete 36 page instruction manual outlining this complete installation process. We're gonna be referencing this today as we go along, but if you need to out in the field, you have this as a great resource in order to install and troubleshoot if you need to do any troubleshooting along the way. Let's go ahead, unbox some of this, and I'll go over some of the major components coming with this system. One of the greatest things about this system is it's shipped right to your door in around three to five days. So you don't have to wait a long time in order to start your installation. Here we have our solar pump box. It has our pump, controller, and some of our accessories in it. Let's go ahead and take a look on what you're getting in this box. First thing we have is our 36 page color user manual. Here's our submersible pump with bubble wrap for shipping. This is our three inch uh, helical style. We also have other three inch centrifugal. And if you're going with our Pro Series, we're gonna have a much larger four inch diameter pump. Our controller, which takes the solar power and drives the pumps located in here. We have our 20 feet of solar uh, wire to connect from the solar panels up to our controller. You're gonna get two sensors with 100 feet of wire on each. One is our low well sensor, the other is our tank full sensor. Good thing is they're identical and they're gonna perform a function to hook up to the controller and it's either gonna turn the system on or off depending whether it's the tank full sensor or the well low sensor, which happens to protect the pump. We have a stainless steel hose barb along with our hose clamps. This comes in three quarter inch standard, but if you need to do one inch poly pipe, we can swap it out for a one inch barb. We have our splice kit. Our splice kit's going to waterproof our connections when we connect our pump, which has around eight feet of wire up to our drop wire, which is contained in our turnkey kit. This makes a nice waterproof connection and it's adhesive line. So as we heat it, and you'll see this later, the adhesive is gonna flow out of the shrink tubing and it's gonna seal up that splice connection. We have our spare pumping mechanism. If you're getting a helical pump, there is a spare pumping mechanism. This pump is one of the only pumps that's field repairable. And in case you ever wear it out due to a degraded well, like you're pumping sand or silt, or just after a long number of years of pumping, you may need to replace this pumping mechanism. You get a free one and we have a lifetime warranty on this. If you're using one of our centrifugal pumps, there are no wear parts, so you're not gonna need this. We also have adhesive line, shrink tubing, and crimps. If you need to extend out either your tank full sensor or your well low sensor, that's a signal wire. We can use any gauge we need in order to extend it. A majority of the installations are gonna be fine with the 100 foot of wire included in the kit. We also have our mounting screws and our ground lug. This goes in the back of the controller. We'll also show you that during the installation, how to hook this up. Back behind me, we have our solar panels and our mount. The solar panels come shipped, two per box. They're facing glass to glass. When you get these, you're gonna to wanna to inspect them, make sure there's no shipping damage. This contains all of the aluminum parts you're gonna need in order to mount our panels on either our two inch inside diameter post for our two panel mount, or our four inch inside diameter post for our four panel and our eight panel mount. We're gonna open this up when we do the installation a little bit later. Our base solar pump kits come with the pump, controllers, accessories, and our solar panels. We want to provide our customers the most flexibility to decide whether they want to build, such as building their own mount, or whether they just want to purchase the rest of the components. If you want to purchase the rest of the components, I highly recommend our turnkey kit. That comes with the solar panel mount and the bundle you see here, which comes with our poly pipe on the outside, and then inside, it's going to come with our wire, our drop rope, 
and a couple other accessories like well seals and the through fittings for those. Basically everything you're going to need to install your pump besides the mounting pipe, the concrete, and the ground rod. Let's go ahead, cut this open, and I'll show you what's coming in the turnkey kit. So let's go ahead, get the box pulled out, and we'll show you what comes in the inner box of the turnkey kit, surrounded by our poly pipe. The turnkey kits come in 100 foot, 200 foot, and 300 foot lengths. They're all pre-packaged like this, ready to ship to your door. In this case, it's a 100 foot turnkey kit. So on the outside here, we have 100 foot of poly pipe. In this case, we're using a one inch, but we also have it in three quarter inch. Depending on your flow rates, we'll help you size whether you need to get a three quarter inch or one inch kit. And in here is our 100 foot of submersible pump wire. This is high quality pump wire, dual jacketed. It has an outside PVC jacket and an inside PVC jacket on each of the conductors to provide abrasion resistance so you're not gonna get any shorts in your well. We have a 100 foot of safety rope. We do recommend installing safety rope in case we have an issue with our poly pipe, which is gonna give us something else to pull the pump out. In this bag, we have our ground clamp, which is gonna go on a ground rod, our ground wire. We have Teflon tape that's gonna provide nice waterproof connections as we do all the plumbing and electrical tape. We're gonna use electrical tape quite a bit as we're dropping the pipe down. I'll show you how we're gonna do that in a little bit. We also have our one inch barb. As I said, the kit comes standard with a three quarter inch barb. Since we purchased a one inch turnkey kit, we're gonna get a separate one inch barb in order to do this installation. We also have our through fittings for our well seal. Now the well seal comes in multiple sizes. You're gonna to need to let us know whether you're gonna need a four inch, five inch, six inch, whatever matches your casing. We have a whole video on how to measure your casing size, so check that out if you wanna know what size casing you have. These are all stainless steel fittings. They're great corrosion resistance. So when we put this through the well seal, the pump is gonna hang off the bottom here, and then we're gonna have a one inch outlet. From this one inch outlet, you're able to hook up whatever plumbing, whether you're going into a tank, your house, or whether you're gonna free flow into a pond. If you ordered a 200 foot or a 300 foot turnkey kit, you're gonna have a different low water sensor in your turnkey kit. It's gonna have either 200 feet or 300 feet of wire in order to match your installation depth. This makes it super easy so you don't have to splice any of this wire. So that's the basis of the kit and everything you're gonna to need to do the installation. Let's jump in the truck, we're gonna drive on over the well and let's get started installing. So we're out here on our well site. Let's go over the tools you're gonna to need for the installation, along with some site work you could do ahead of time to make install day go much smoother. For our toolbox, first of all, you're gonna need a set of wrenches or an adjustable wrench. This is gonna be for all of the bolts on doing our solar panel mount. A pair of electrical pliers are gonna come in really handy today. These are multi-feature. We're gonna be able to strip the wires, we're gonna be able to do our crimping, and if we have any fine electrical work, we'll be able to grab wires and get them hooked up where they need to go. We'll need a screwdriver. A pipe cutter comes in handy for cutting all of our poly pipe. You can also use a pocket knife, but a pipe cutter is gonna make it a little bit easier. We're also gonna need a torch or a hot air gun or a lighter. This is gonna be for our adhesive line shrink tubing. We're gonna heat it up so it shrinks down on the wire and also melts that adhesive so we have a nice waterproof connection. If you have a multimeter, it's gonna be best to bring it out. While you're not gonna need it for a standard installation, if you run into any troubleshooting, it's gonna make it much easier so you can determine where the power is going and where your problem lies with your setup. Finally, a shovel. 
This is gonna be used for digging the hole for our post in order to mount our mounting pipe. If you have a sledgehammer, you might as well bring that along. It's gonna make it much easier for putting in your grounding rod. So as you can see, it's not too many tools needed. Better to bring more than less so you don't have to run back to the shop and grab anything you forgot. Now let's go quick over site planning. So we're out here in our well site. We picked a nice sunny area. Now the sun is gonna come in from the south, which in our case is this direction. So while we do have trees behind us, those trees are not gonna affect us because they're not located to the south. So we're gonna to wanna to mount our pipe for our solar panels in a nice sunny location. We don't want any small shadows. We don't want any uh, tree branches, anything hanging over it that's gonna obstruct the panels. We have a whole video about shadows and how they affect the power output of your panels. You might not believe it, but even a small shadow can cause a significant power drop and that is gonna affect your water output. So if you have a bunch of big trees, time to get out the chainsaw, fire it up, and cut some limbs so we have a nice, clean sun. To make the installation day go much smoother, it's gonna be nice if you can come out the day before and get your solar panel pipe mounted into the ground. You're gonna to wanna to dig around a 30 inch deep hole and use at least three bags of concrete for your solar panel mounting post. You see this one here, might look a little strange. This is actually our portable mount. We move it around to all of our different test setups. You're gonna to wanna to mount yours permanently in the ground, so it's gonna look a little bit different. We're gonna break this installation into four simple steps. Step one, we're gonna do the splicing of the drop wire and the plumbing connections to our solar pump. Step two, we're gonna mount our solar panels onto our post. Step three, we're gonna wire up our controller. And step four, we're gonna turn on the system, see how it runs, and do some testing to make sure everything's operating correctly. Let's jump in. I'm gonna show you how to do the plumbing connections and the splice to your submersible pump. So first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna take our poly pipe out of the blue packaging. We're also gonna get our drop wire out and we're gonna extend it out in this field. Part of that, it's gonna allow uh, the pipe to heat up. The pipe's a little bit easier to handle when it's warm by the sun. If you don't have a sunny day, that's all right. You can still handle it while it's uh, rigid. But if we get it laid out, it's gonna help get some of the coils out of there, get it straighter, uh, much easier to drop down our well casing. So let me go ahead, I'm gonna get this laid out. Once I have it laid out, we're gonna jump back over here. I'm gonna pull out the submersible pump. We're gonna do our splice and our plumbing connection to that pump. So we got our drop pipe and our drop wire laid out along over there. It's nice, the sun's out, it's gonna heat up that drop pipe and it's gonna make it easier to work with when we're dropping it down the well casing. Now we're gonna get our pump ready. It's real nice, the pump has three wires coming off of it and it comes with crimps already attached to it. So you're just gonna to have to crimp this to your drop wire. It also comes with adhesive line shrink tubing. Before we do the crimping, we're gonna slide the shrink tubes over, perform our crimps, slide them over our crimps, and then using a small torch, we're gonna to heat them up, let them shrink down. That inside adhesive, it's a kind of like a hot melt glue. It's gonna melt, it's gonna ooze out the ends, and it's gonna make a nice waterproof connection. Now there are wire numbers on each of these, one, two, and three. When we do this crimping, if your drop wire colors don't match up exactly, you're gonna to wanna to write in your instruction book the pump wire to your drop wire color code. In your splice kit, we also include new numbers, one, two, three. So when you make these connections, go walk to the end of your drop wire and put the markers on. I can't tell you how many times people have done this. They think they can remember, then they're not quite sure when they're setting up the pump, which one is one, two, three. Well, it's not the end of the world, at that point, it's gonna take some troubleshooting and you might have to pull your pump up to figure it out. So it's best while you do this connection, write it down, take a picture with your phone, or put your markers on your drop wire so you remember when it's time to hook up to your controller which wire is one, which wire is two, and which wire is three. I'm gonna do this splicing process fairly quickly, but we have another YouTube video with a detailed step-by-step -step of how to do the wire splice. If you want a little bit more instruction, go ahead, check out that video. It's gonna walk you through it. You're gonna see all the steps here, uh, but I'm gonna go fairly quickly in order to get this uh, splice complete.
So let's now move on to doing our plumbing. The basics are we're gonna take our barb, put it into the end of the pump, and attach our poly pipe. I'm gonna go through this process fairly quickly, but we have a great video in the description below, and it's gonna take you step by step through all your plumbing considerations from your pump up through your well seal and beyond. So for this installation, we're not gonna install a check valve at the outlet of our pump because due to freezing considerations, we want the line to drain back every night when the pump shuts off and the sun is down. If you're doing a pressurized system or perhaps a really long run, you might wanna install a check valve. Very straightforward, this simply screws into the end of your pump and your barb attaches at the end. We're not gonna be installing this, we're just gonna put the barb directly on the outlet of the pump. I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna do those steps, and we'll check in when I'm all complete. So you can see the plumbing was a very simple step. We used Teflon tape to seal our threads. A couple of wraps are fine. That's gonna help prevent any leaking out of that connection and make sure it's nice and secure. So you're gonna notice at the very end, we used electrical tape and we wrapped up our clamps that hold the pipe to the bar. Now that's an important step. When we later on tape this wire up above, we don't want the wire rubbing against the sharp edges of the hose clamps, causing a short or cut in our wires. It's gonna provide some nice protection for the wire so you don't run into any issues over the year's operation. So at this point, you have two options. One is we can go ahead and drop our pump down our well without our solar panel set up, but we always recommend testing in a bucket of water if you have it available. So in this case, we're going to mount our solar panels, we're gonna get our bucket of water, test our pump, with the controller and solar panels hooked up, then the final step is gonna be dropping it down our well. That way, if we have any issues with our splice, or say we forgot to label our wires, it's gonna be very easy to troubleshoot that at the surface, make sure we're pumping water, then we drop it down our well, and then do a final water check. So I've gone ahead, I've unboxed the solar panels, and now it's in time to install our mount. So as you can see, the mount kit is 100% stainless steel and anodized aluminum. That gives it the ultimate corrosion resistance for years out in harsh environments. Uh, it's easy to bolt together. Doesn't require any other tools than a wrench. We also have a detailed installation video for this mount. Again, I'm gonna go through it rather quickly. You're gonna see all the steps go together, but if you have any questions, there's a nice color user manual that comes with all the mounts, plus we have that detailed video that should help you get going and get you set up right away. So our solar panels are mounted on our top of pole solar panel mount. I went ahead, pulled out a controller, and you're gonna see on the back of your controller, there's four screws. And if you've purchased our top of pole mount, it's gonna come with these brackets and these clamps. And this is gonna allow us to mount our controller onto our pole. Also in the bag of screws, there's also a little ground clamp. We're gonna put this ground clamp also on the back of the controller, and that's gonna allow us to hook up our ground wire. Let's go ahead, get this controller mounted, and then we'll start doing our initial wiring. So we have our controller mounted onto our pole, and I went ahead and pulled off the door. Uh, it's convenient if you want to put your door up on top of here, it'll kind of sit, sit in place while we do all the wiring. Now, if you have a two panel or a four panel RPS system, that's the RPS 200, RPS 400, and RPS 400V, we're going to connect all the panels in series. And then, using our solar extension wire, we're going to connect the two ends down to our controller here. If you have an RPS 800 or 800V, this is a very important step. We don't wanna hook all eight of our panels in series. We wanna hook four in series in one chain, 
then four in series in another chain, then inside your pump box were these Y connectors. These Y connectors allow us to hook the positive wires on one side together and the negative wires on the other side together, putting the two sets of four panels in parallel. Then off of these Y connectors, we can use our solar extension wire and come down and plug it into our controller. If you hook up more than four of our 100 watt panels in series, you're very likely gonna damage the controller. If you're using your own large panels, then you wanna be very careful. A lot of larger panels are higher voltage in the 40 to 45 volt output range. That means on those panels, very likely you're gonna be able to put a maximum of two in series, and then the rest of those are gonna be in parallel. If you have any questions about it, there's large panel sizing in the user manual, or if you're still unsure, give us a call, send us a picture of the data plate on the back of the panel, and we'll tell you how to configure the solar panels. There's nothing worse than getting out of the field and burning up a controller and having to swap it out for a new one. In this case, we have an RPS 400 with four panels. I'm gonna connect all the panels in series. I'm gonna grab our solar extension wire and run it down into our controller. I'm gonna hook most of it up. I'm not gonna hook this part up until we have our pump wires connected. Then I'll do a final plug-in and we'll do a test in our bucket. Let me go ahead and get that set up. So I went ahead and got everything set up and we're ready for our bucket test. I have all four panels in series and then I used our extension wire in order to bring the plus and minus up here ready to go into the controller. I also installed our ground rod and our ground wire. Ground wire connects to the back of the controller and I used a six foot ground rod in the back in the provided clamp in order to hook up the ground wire to the ground rod. If you're in a high lightning area, this is a very important step because if you get direct strikes or nearby strikes, it's going to help protect your controller and your panels against that damage. I also hooked up our pump wire for this test. As you can see, I previously labeled the wires one, two, three, and they go into the corresponding spot one, two, three on the controller. Now I'm ready to plug in my controller and run the test. Now we don't have our low well sensor hooked up. And so we are gonna have to put a little jumper in here in order to override it. If you don't have a little jumper, you can go ahead, hook your low well sensor in here and put it in the bucket in order to get the pump to run. Because we have low water protection, uh, it is gonna require either a small jumper across COM1 and WH or that the sensor is submerged in the bucket. Now when I do this test, I don't wanna run it too long. I either wanna wait until I have water coming out of the end of the pipe but if you have a long pipe, as long as you're seeing the water level drop in the bucket, you know the pump wires are correct and you have good connections and that's sufficient for your bucket test. So let me go ahead, I'm gonna plug this in, I'm gonna hook up my low water override and I'm gonna fire it up and see if it's running the right way. see our bucket test was successful. I highly recommend you do the bucket test before you drop the well pump down our well because it's much easier to troubleshoot anything here at the surface where we have access to the pump, we have access to the splice and all of the wire. But if you're unable to, just double check your connections and then go ahead and drop it down. In order to get ready for dropping our well pump down our well, I'm gonna go ahead and attach our low well sensor. This is very important. It's gonna prevent our pump from running dry if we're over pumping our well, and it's gonna protect our pump and motor from overheating. It's really easy to attach. We attach it around one foot above our drop pipe just using some electrical tape. Let me go hook this onto our drop pipe, and then we'll get ready to do our final installation. The great thing about our system is, in addition to the low well sensor, we also have inputs for a tank full sensor. This can go into a tank, a horse trough, or wherever you're pumping your water. And when the water level rises up and touches the sensor, it's gonna tell the pump to turn off, and that's gonna prevent your tank from overflowing. 
This is the exact same sensor as the Lowell, and it's stainless steel. That means there's no moving parts to break over time. So we're gonna go ahead, we're gonna get this sensor installed on the top of our tank, and then we're gonna do a final hookup to our controller. We're gonna hook up the pump wires, the tank full wire, and the low well wires using the glands on the bottom of our controller. Let's go ahead and get that set up. You can get more creative with your installation method, but literally, we're just gonna take the sensor, put it through into the top of our tank, and let it hang by the wire, and that's gonna act as our tank full, and when it gets to around right here in the tank, it's gonna shut off the water automatically, so we always keep a full tank. So we're ready to drop our well pump down our well, and there's two ways we can do this. If you're installing by yourself, I recommend we stretch out the drop pipe and you pre-tape the wire and the low well sensor every 10 to 20 feet along your drop pipe, leaving some slack in between. That's important because poly pipe is gonna stretch around 1%. So that means over a 100 foot drop, it might stretch around one foot or so. So we wanna make sure there's a little extra wire slack there. And so if the poly pipe stretches, we're not pulling on our wire and we're not pulling on our splice. If you're installing with multiple people, you can do the taping while you're dropping the pump down the well. One person can lower it around 10 to 20 feet and the second person can do the taping, allowing that slack in the wire. Since I'm doing it by myself, I'm gonna stretch it out here. I'm gonna pre-tape everything. It's gonna make it much easier to drop down the well. While the pump and everything else is gonna be hanging from our drop pipe, we do recommend installing a safety rope. This is a quarter inch polypropylene, just basic yellow poly rope. We're gonna tie this to the top of our pump and tie it off at the top. And if our drop pipe ever breaks, it's gonna give us something else to pull on in order to get the system out. If you purchase our turnkey kit, it's gonna come with stainless steel well seal assembly. This goes on top of your well casing and it actually holds the poly pipe, which is holding all of the weight of the wire and of your pump. So this is very easy to put together. I'm gonna to take our well seal and our stainless steel nipple. I'm gonna put it through the well seal. And on the bottom, we'll attach our stainless steel coupler and our stainless steel hose barb. Now you're gonna to wanna to use Teflon tape on all of these joints and tighten it all down so it's nice and watertight. Now, if you know the depth you're gonna place your pump, you can pre-cut your poly pipe to that distance and pre-attach your well seal assembly. If you're not quite sure, or in our case, we know we're gonna go hit the bottom and then we're gonna raise up around five feet, I'm gonna add our well seal assembly after I've dropped the pump in the well. So let's go ahead, I'm gonna tape up all these joints and then I'm gonna go drop the pump down our well. If you're interested, we have two detailed videos about well seals and about well casings. Check them out if you want more details about how these assemblies work and whether you should choose a well seal or a well cap for your specific application. So we double checked all of our connections and now we're finally ready to start dropping our well pump down our well. Now this is doable with one person, but if you have two people, that's even better. It allows free hands for one person to lower the pump and the other person to help feed wires, grab the pipe, just make sure everything's going down the well casing smoothly. What you want to avoid is your drop wire 
rubbing or pulling tightly against the weld casing as you lower it down. That can damage your wire or pull your splice loose. In general, that's not a problem. With a second set of hands, you can minimize the amount of strain you're putting on any of the wires because we want to lower it by our poly pipe. And at the end, everything's going to be hanging from the poly pipe and there's going to be no load on our wire, our rope, or any of our sensor wire. Now, I do like to use a moist towel or rag when I'm dropping it down. I feed the poly pipe and the wire through it, and that's gonna wipe up any of this dirt or debris, and it's gonna keep it out of our well, keeping a nice, clean water supply. So let's go ahead, I'm gonna grab this pump, and we're gonna drop it down our well. 65 feet, it's not gonna take too long, it's not gonna be too heavy, it's gonna be a nice, simple installation. So we've gone ahead, we've dropped our pump, it's down at the bottom of the well. Now we don't want to leave it at the bottom of the well, we're going to want to raise it around five feet off the bottom, even more if you have plenty of water in your water column, and that's going to allow any sand or silt or any other debris to settle down below your pump and so you're not constantly sucking it up and possibly wearing out your pump or putting that into your water supply. If you know the depth you want to preset the well, then go ahead and install your well seal before you drop the well pump. And then when you get to the end, you know the depth and you can simply set your well seal on top of your well casing. Since I know we're at 65 feet, I went ahead, it's down at the bottom. I'm going to pull it up five feet. So we set it at 60 feet. I'm going to cut the poly pipe off and I'm going to install our well seal and then finish off our well here. Now let's talk a little bit about wire management. Most likely, if it's a very short distance, you're gonna be able to get away with some flexible conduit in order to run your pump wire and your low well sensor through and up over to your controller. If you're going a longer distance, then you're gonna to wanna to either direct burial your wires by digging a trench or install some conduit and pull your wire through the conduit over to your controller. You're also gonna to wanna to fence off this area if there's livestock in it. I can't tell you how many times we get a phone call that the livestock either broke into the fencing or there wasn't any fencing and they came in, chewed up the wires. It's not a big deal. You're gonna to have to do a little bit of repair and we can definitely get you sent out a replacement sensor if anything got damaged and you're not able to splice it. Now everything's hooked up. Let me go ahead. I'm gonna fire up the controller and we're gonna see if everything's working properly. Power light turns on, then we're gonna get our pump light, and after a few seconds, we should start seeing water flowing from our well. And with the flip of a switch, we're up and pumping water out in the middle of a field where we normally wouldn't be able to. If you need a system, we have pump sizing specialists standing by ready to help you size your system and make sure it's the right fit for you. We ship the systems right to your door. So all you have to do is load in your truck, drive out on the field and get it installed in only a couple of hours. This is Mike with RPS Solar Pumps. If you need a pump, give us a call at 888-637-4493 or visit us at rpssolarpumps.com and put the sun to work pumping water every day for your livestock, irrigation or any of your water needs.